So one of my book readers wrote to me and said, George, I'm not sure that I can sustain a presence on social media like you do. Um, I'm afraid of, that it feels exhausting. Um, I have to feel like I, keeping an image up of myself and or I might even find um, run out of things to say. Right now. This is an issue I think a lot of you face. I recently uh, spoke on a on a sort of like a summit where the the topic was how do you run a business these days, or at least even get started without using social media. So there's this ongoing love hate relationship that a lot of us have with social media, and it's not helpful when you are driving with the brakes on so in other words you feel obligated to use social media but then you you know feel like what my reader wrote to me about you know i can't I'm gonna sustain a presence it doesn't feel authentic it feels exhausting um, i'm gonna run out of things to say and i've been on social media now since 2000 and 2000, late 2000s, 2008, 2009 was when I got really active and, and have stayed consistently active since then. And I'll tell you, how did I keep it up after all those years? And particularly um, to do it in a way where I still feel energized and uh, able to express myself in a, in a real authentic way um, on social media after all these years. When what happened was most of the people I, most of my friends and colleagues that I started with in the early days, 2008, 2009, most of them are definitely no longer active on social media. And I'm one of the few of those early uh, people who, who are still around and very active and happy to be around here. So the difference is this, I don't think of social media as an image upkeep chore okay i think of social media as more like a friendship so when you have a real friend do you think to that do you think to yourself oh i got to go hang out with my friend now i got to make sure i i have a good image i'm keeping up and and i make sure i'm going to plan out the things i'm going to say if, if that were true, wouldn't, to me, that feels exhausting as a kind of a friendship to have to, you know, make sure I, 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 I looked apart and, and are saying the right things. A real friend, a friend that you can really trust, like a, like a heart, you know, true friend, a heart soulmate type person, is one that you feel really comfortable with. And because you feel comfortable, and sometimes you don't look so good that day and and they still accept you for who you are. And sometimes you run out of things to say, and you you are say sometimes you say things that are, um, you know, not not very pleasant. And they still accept you for who you are because they see past the image, and they see past, and they are patient enough to wait with you through the times when you're not at your so called best. But because you feel so comfortable with them, there is an energy signature that you express um, authentically that they resonate with, and that's why they continue being your friend. There's a soul connection rather than just an egoic human, oh, I like you on the outside, and I like you because you say pleasant things to me. That is how I think of social media. Now, you might say, really? Yes, I really do think of social media like this kind of a friendship where it's like, I'm sometimes not going to be that, I I really, I've, I've said before, I don't mind being unattractive. And many of you are very kind to say, ah, oh, George, you're plenty attractive, whatever, I'll go, I don't care. I don't mind uh, not knowing what to say sometimes, especially on video. And I don't mind that my writings don't, sound so eloquent sometimes and oftentimes maybe i'm i'm a at best an average writer <laughs> and reading most reading most of every everything i read online i feel like i'm below average of a writer to be honest with you i'm not being 
humble or whatever. It's just, I mean, English is my second language, first of all. It's not my native language. I mean, I, I've been learning English for decades now. So it's it's almost it's pretty much native to me, right? But it's still, it's not my born language. You know, I, I spent the first seven years of my life, you know, not speaking English. And so anyway, I have always felt like I don't write as beautifully as most English writers. That's that's what I've got to say. Um, and I think I have pretty good taste about good writing because I have an English degree from UC Berkeley. So one of the top, um, when I was going to school there, it was the top public university English department in the world. And I got an English degree there. So I think I have good taste, but I just never became that good of a writer myself because I had I didn't have the patience and and just the the maybe the natural talent and 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 I didn't work hard enough to become a great writer. And still to this day, I don't feel like I'm a great. I'm an I'm an average at best writer. I mean, you you know, let's be honest, right? I'm my my I'm prolific. That's true. I write a lot more. I publish a lot more than most people, but my writing is just mm, so so. But my ideas, um, the ideas within the writing are pretty good sometimes, you know, and, and pretty interesting. So that's my writing. And then my 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 video, as you know, unedited. Sometimes I have uh, pauses. Sometimes I don't sound so smart. Um, sometimes I don't know what to say. And yet you're still here. I probably already lost, you know, 90% of my viewers by this point. But you, by the fact that you're watching this, you're still here. And I'm grateful because you are the ones, you are the few that I think of when I show up for social media. The ones that are patient enough. Because it's the ones who resonate with my energy signature enough to stay through my long, boring videos. And because I, because, it's because of you and my relationship to you. And by the way, when I say you, I'm thinking of like this combination of um, several of you, you know, who are so kind and patient with me and who connect with me and somehow find value even when I'm boring and unattractive or, or not such a good writer or um, say some things that are, that are offensive occasionally or dumb or whatever. I'm thinking of you, those of you who are patient enough to stay with me. I'm kind of thinking of this combination person of this ideal connection, ideal friend. Um, and because I think of you, I am so comfortable showing up on social media and I look forward to it because of you, you see. And the person who wrote me the original question that started this video of, I don't think I can keep myself up uh, an image on social media. I don't, then we run out of things to say, is not thinking of the ideal connection on social media who resonates so much with their energy signature that they are patient enough and not just patient it's not even the word maybe patience is not even the right word because it's more like you who are still here the you know the one percent of you who are still watching this are it's not that you're patient but that you somehow get some value even out of my boring what 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 the average person might consider my boring parts or my less attractive parts. That's what a soulmate is, you know, or at least a soulmate on this level of um, connection with someone's deeper parts that transcend or that 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 are um, valuable beyond the surface level attractiveness that society expects on video or in writing or in showing up on social media. So in other words, I value 
the practice of presence and not the aim towards perfection. Or another way of saying it is, I believe, not just believe, I've experienced that when I am comfortable because I am envisioning you, again, the, the one half of 1% who are still here, <laughs> because I envision how com how connected and right for each other we are, therefore I'm so comfortable. And because I'm so comfortable, I think that is a perfect way to show up on social media. This is what I call authentic marketing, if you want to call it marketing. This is what I call authentic business because I don't have to pretend. And I can practice continually leaning again into that level of comfort and therefore confidence in exploring and being my real self on video, in writing, on my group calls, when I'm being interviewed on a podcast. And so presence, not perfection. Because perfection, or I should say perfection is authentic presence. That is the true perfection that isn't what society says is perfection, right? Because typically when we say, keep up an image on social media, what, what is that? Where, where did that come from? That is certainly the external um, requirements or expectations. But expectations from whom? Who is the one giving you that expectation? It's certainly not the soulmate friend. It's probably uh, your own past conditioning and training from your parents, your authority figures say you got to dress up in this way. You got to act in this way. You got to get straight A's. You've got to whatever, which creates this societal sense of perfection within your mind that, oh, this is how I'm supposed to show up on social media. I've got to have makeup on. If you're if you're women or if you wear makeup, you, you got to have my makeup on. I've got my hair's got to look right. I'm too. I'm still too vain about my hair most of the time. Uh, my my my. I can't too. I can't look frumpy. All right. Got to look stylish. Okay. If you enjoy looking stylish, fine. But I still wonder how much of looking stylish is an external expectation, an early expectation that you're trying to please somebody um, who is no longer helpful for your deepest and truest authentic ex expression. So this is why I, I'm purposefully frumpy. I'm purposefully like, I'm going to make myself look frumpy and um, unattractive because then I strip away everything. Now, maybe you could say I'm self-sabotaging with my, with my, um, you know, unpolished look or whatever. It could be, that could be past conditioning too, that I'm reacting to, but Regardless, I know that when I show up and I feel comfortable, I, I don't think I purposely try to be unattractive, but I show up and I'm like, I'm, I'm comfortable as I am here. Um, I don't have to be anything different online than I am walking around in, in real life. That's the, that's the point, right? The way I'm walking around in real life is the way I'm here on, on camera with you. And because the baseline is a level of confidence and comfort. That is what makes social media sustainable. The authenticity and therefore the lack of using energy to keep up an image is what makes social media uh, sustainable. And someone else said it, you know, brilliantly, Gary Vaynerchuk said, document, don't create. Document, don't create. Create means of creating content. I got to create myself. I got to create some image. I got to create something brilliant. 
for people. And he said, no, 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 just document your journey. Document your journey, meaning I'm going along my journey and I'm going to show you what my journey is like. I'm going to show you the journey of my mind. I'm going to show you the journey of my mistakes and how I recover from my mistakes. I'm going to show you the journey of my my accomplishments and my the peak experiences that I have. I'll share those with you too. Document all of that and document your, your evolution. When, when do you stop evolving? Never. So when do you stop documenting? Never. And as you document your journey, you're going to naturally, on social media, right? Publicly journaling. Public journaling, not only private journaling. I barely do any private journaling, actually. I journal, journal mostly publicly. No, I do some. I do some. But as you document and publicly journal, you're on social media, right? As much as you can, distributing your authentic content everywhere, you're naturally going to draw the people who resonate with your energy signature and are, and therefore it seems that they are patient enough to stick with you through the thick and the thins, through the days when you feel not so attractive and through the days when you are having an up energy, all of it. And that is your true fan base. And that's how you can sustain social media long enough to become ever more skillful and confident because skill and confidence come from practice. You sustain your presence long enough, consistently enough that you become truly skillful or ever more skillful and you become truly more attuned to what is the, the intersection between your authenticity and what the world yearns for. That intersection takes time to sense into and it takes practice to sense into. So you've got to show up sustainably on social media. There's no better way, there's no better place for you to really discover your calling. If you're gonna do it without social media, what, how, how are you going to have all these experiments and tests that allow you, and the, the algorithm, by the way, is your friend. The algorithm is not some enemy to like battle and, and try to game, no. The algorithm will keep on testing your content in front of different people until it finds you your true fans. At, most people are not your true fan, which is why you don't get likes on most of your content. But it keeps testing your content in front of a bunch of different kinds of people until if, oh, wait, this one person liked your thing and, and liked it again. And maybe this other thing they didn't like, but they liked this one. The algorithm is our friend to help us test. Without social media, you don't have this kind of powerful algorithm for you to keep testing your authenticity and that intersection between your authenticity and what the, your, the world yearns for and to find that sliver that just right audience. So please stop demonizing social media. It's a, it's a genius, brilliant algorithm for your authentic, your authentic expression. That's what it is. That's how I see it anyway. So I hope this is helpful. May this inspire you to show up more sustainably on social media, knowing that it's about like an authentic friendship. And I hope this helps.